Well, another week's in the books and another win over the Wildcats. Uh, it's kind of like sunrises. You expect to see one every day, and that's the way it is every year with Kentucky. Uh, they love to break their hearts, kind of give them hope. And uh, they had some hope tonight, Bob. Yeah, but the sun set it on their, them hopes pretty quickly. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that's the thing about Kentucky. Uh, uh, sun comes up, but it's going to dry back down. Yeah. They have the monkey on their back, just like we've had it with, you know, Florida for like 30 years. Yeah. So I I, I feel the pain, but I'm still going to life out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, that said, Bob, let's jump into the game. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that today. We're going to touch a little bit about how the playoff situation might have cleared up a little bit. Yeah. Um, every week should be a little clearer, uh, with occasionally maybe something muddying it up a little bit. All right. And uh, we'll talk about really big news in the conference. Um Commissioner Sankey has promised repercussions for faking injuries. Yeah. Um, we'll see if anything comes of it, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because I, I, I highly doubt it. But let's start with the game, Bob. Uh, initial thoughts or anything specific that you like? Uh, initial thoughts. Uh, Nico played better, which is fantastic. Something that needed to happen. Uh, you know, and I think I said before this game, if we're going to make the playoff, uh, Nico's going to, have to play better, and he did. Uh, problem is, man, we didn't uh, we didn't put it all together offensively or really defensively. Uh, really, style points are starting to be a big deal, and I'm concerned that we didn't score any style points last night. No, we did for. I mean, I, we'll talk a little bit about the whole playoff picture, but style points mean something there. But uh, you know, we put up some yardage. Last night, it's yeah, just uh, almost got 500 yards. Um, a good game if you go by that. Three missed field goals. Bad probably, game if uh, you go by that. Two probably missed touchdown catches, uh, which one of them would have been. I mean, it wasn't just a but layup, Ke but it's not it was, was tough because he got nailed by that guy. Yeah, the, the uh, well, not just that one, the uh, the Brazel. I think it's a Brazel one that he hit him in the hands, I think it was, but when he was kind of laying out for it. No, well, not easy catch by no means, but uh, need to catch it. You need to catch it. Uh, the Kitzelman, like you said, though, I mean, somebody on Volquest said this: the only person who holds on that thing might be Jawan Jennings, and that's yeah, that's probably probably, all right. probably a good point. And Nimrod may have uh, took that one to the house that he dropped. Yeah, he had a couple drops, I think, in the game. I, I don't know what the deal. His is. first you know, catch was a bobble. It was, yeah. Oh, uh, that. You know, this a couple of years now that the receivers are not helping out the quarterbacks. You know, look, Milton had issues last year. Yeah, we said it all the time. He wasn't getting any help from his wide receivers, dropping way too many balls. Yeah. And um, Mr. Pope, let's how about teaching them guys how to catch yeah. the ball, man. I mean, that's two years your guys are dropping way too many balls. Yeah. Um, and it's really disjointing this offense. Showed us the head again last night, Bob, like you said. Um, Nico performed well, but could have had 400 yards probably. Yeah. If, if the catch. Um, it was good to see Mike Matthews out there a little bit more. Uh, he had uh, 19 snaps, I think it was. Uh, one catch, though, unfortunately, just one. He had a really nice block uh, somebody showed uh, uh, on YouTube uh, where he pancake the guy on the outside uh, well, he, he was noted for being physical coming out of high school he needs more game time uh, and i was good to see him I'll tell you another guy that's good to see it uh tim was uh peyton lewis uh the a guy who we feel like is a future star uh austin price says he's a quote faster arian foster uh the uh, he thinks he's a future star kind of guy uh, so it's good to see him getting a little bit of game time last night. Yeah, had a, had a touchdown. Had a uh, touchdown. And really was in there the whole drive. Yeah. Did not have a big play. And he's a big play waiting to happen. Probably he's the target yeah. on the team. He's got he's got size and speed. Mm -hmm. But it was good to see him. I was a little concerned, though, uh, about the future of Cam Selden. He didn't get in the game that I saw. Even on, I don't know if there's an injury situation, but it worried me about next year with him. Right. And I don't really know why... Bishop only got one carry like right. I haven't heard anything on that if he got dinged up or or not. Yeah. Uh, still like to see a little bit more of Ethan Davis than what we're seeing. Absolutely. 
But, they, you know, that's just a little minor thing to whine about. Right. Because we won. We won. We did, actually. We won by 10. Uh, really should have won by much more than that. Uh, didn't oh, think we left a lot of points on the field. Didn't think the defense played particularly well. I mean, I, I felt like we had the maybe the best defense in the country, at least top five. And uh, that wasn't a top five. Well, they didn't play up to their usual standard. Yeah. They kept another team under at 20 points yet again. Yeah. Um, but they they had a few uh, mistakes last night. They looked, they looked human. Yeah, they they let some some big plays happen, which they haven't been doing this year. Uh, I was uh, that was kind of a bit disappointing. But uh, and then that the uh, uh, the quarterback for Kentucky, the backup guy, I can't think of his name. Winsett. Winsett. Uh, he had a couple of passes of that, and the and the combination of pass and catch was about unstoppable. There, uh, I have to give him credit for that. It don't matter. What kind of coverage you had on that? It was going to be uh, a catch, but uh, overall, though, uh, it's a win. If you want to throw the positive on it, Nico played took considerably step. better. Took a step. Yeah, took a step. So we put the rest of the parts together on offense. I think this is just a, you know, one of those games on defense. We'll be better next week. I wonder. I hope we don't see this officiating crew again. Oh, no, I don't like this. In my lifetime. They're, they're horrible. Oh, yeah, they always do. I mean, some Kentucky fans are around me, and they're like, they're not disagreeing. You know, they're it, this unit just bad. Oh, yeah, they call a lot of mystery stuff. And, uh, and I, we, I mean, you was talking about it. Man, they, uh, the, the marks on this game, and this is the same crew we had last year when we felt like the spots was horrible on like the Milton ran the run that we should have got a first down for didn't um this thing crew uh for that one I noticed last night several times that the mark on the ball would be a full yard off yeah and I was at the games so I couldn't see it from where I was sitting but when you showed me a little bit this morning I'm like What's that guy looking at? Because he's looking over at the sideline. I don't know if there's another guy over there telling him to move it back. But he starts here, and then he's looking over there, and he moves it back a little yard. And yeah. I'm thinking, dude, you had it pretty you had it close. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, we slow it down, look at it, you know, where's, where's the knee hitting, you know, where's the ball at when the knee hits. And it's not even close. I well, it, it, that rest spot in the ball probably cost us um, another play or two. At the end of the first half, it was a first down. We made the first down, but yet he marked it back about a yard. Uh, if we'd got the first down, then we last play. Yeah, we're not rushing as much, but right. Yeah, it, it's a just a that's just a bad fishing crew. Yeah, um, I don't think it was the coach's best game either. No, I agree. We probably. Uh, Probably wasted, which I don't know the specifics, so I can't really say for sure. But we used two timeouts early in the first half. Uh, you know, I wonder what's up with those because we sure could have used them there at the end of the first half. Uh, play calling don't seem to be the greatest. Uh, it was taking a long third and long obvious passing situations. There's a 50 50 chance that we're still not passing. No, we're probably and not. If we are, the only thing that's going to make it is a uh, the only change we got to make it is just throw deep and hope somebody comes up with something. On third and long, true long, 10 yards or month or more, I bet we're one of the worst teams in the country. Because uh, I'm back guarantee we're going to run the ball, first of all. Uh, if it's second and long, we're probably going to run the ball. Uh, we we got, seems like to be a team that throws it deep, we don't have nothing for third and long. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we don't. Weird. Um, on some good news, Bob, you got another full helping of crow served to you this week. Yeah, that uh, Will Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> you you bad mouth him, but <laughs> yeah, you, you bad mouth him to start the season, and he's balled out since. Uh, I know. Uh, I'm like, who is that? Will that go Brooks? I'm gonna have to suck that up. And... Yeah, I got to say something else again. 
No, I'm happy for him, man. The guy, he's bought out. Hey, he's, I mean, athletically, he's not there, but man, when you when you're where you're supposed to be, he's you know exactly where he was on this one. Uh, he, he makes plays, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I initial apology to Will Brooks. Hopefully, I have to do this a few more times. A few more times, yeah. yeah. And I guarantee you, though, the guys in the locker room, where they're patting them on the back, they're also yeah. asking them, "How in the world did you get run down? Oh, yeah, you had a ten yard lead on people." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's no running back, that's for sure. No, he, he's not fleet of foot, but he needs in the right spot. Right. Way to go, Will. Yeah. Uh, another big big play in that game last night. Turnovers uh, kept us, uh, may have been the difference in the game. I, my man. Because we just ineffective uh, when we got in the red zone. Uh, right. Three missed field goals. Yeah, missed field goals. Touchdowns, like yeah. you said. I mean, it just, it just yeah. Uh, we went with a lot of points on the field. Yeah, we did, we did. But, it went to W. Yeah, we, we we seen certain aspects of the team seems to be playing a little better. We need to play a little better. Uh, do we talk about the the playoff issues, Tim? A little bit, maybe real quick here. Yeah, and then Thank, we'll finish up with Sankey in the yeah. We, we uh, playoff picture got a little clearer, but honestly, we are talking about the style points. We need. Honestly, I I put if we don't beat Georgia, I'm putting this. I'm thinking probably like a 45, 50 percent chance of making it as of right now. I will say that the picture there was a game or two that helped us a little bit Saturday. Uh, probably the biggest one, um, Clemson getting beat by Louisville. It might keep that one from being a uh, you know, we was concerned that there might be two or possibly three teams make it in the ACC. Uh, now, SMU went in yesterday. Uh, good chance they're only a one-loss team from here on out. From here on out. Until they get to their conference championship game. And I think the ACC, you know, there's been a lot of talk about whether a team that make the ACC championship game will lose and still make the playoffs. There's no such talk for the ACC. Yeah. If you... Uh, Losing their conference championship game and you got two losses after, I don't think you're in. Probably right. But now SMU beats Miami. Then they're both in. Then they're both in. It, it, there's a lot of football to be played at this point. But Louisville beating Clemson was good. Um, Texas Tech being Iowa State, that was good for us. Uh, South Carolina beating Texas and m was good for us. Uh, Houston beating Kansas State, thrown down the list. But it was a good... We, no, well, I think that eliminates. They're eliminated now. Yeah, they're eliminated. Now. So that's good. That's yeah. one more to get rid of. Yeah, and it lessens their any quality win another team plays on them lessens their status a little bit. Well, it does. I, I think what we, the big picture from yesterday, what we can get by is that going into yesterday, it looked like there was going to be at least three teams total between the ACC and the Big Twelve. Now it looks like very possibly I see a path to each conference only getting one team in. That would be good. Uh, I still think there would be a three, if I had to guess, between the three, between the two conferences. Oh, it's still out there. That's still definitely a possibility. I, but I, I did not see a path, really, that there wasn't going to be a three. I see that path now. i tell you what worries me a little bit, though. Does four teams make it in the Big Ten? I absolutely will, I believe. Uh, uh, Penn State, one loss right now. Ohio State, one loss. Oregon, no. Done. Indiana, no. Indiana, done. So there's a real chance four teams make it uh, from the Big Ten. Uh, so unless one of them collapse, I don't think there's a question because with Ohio State winning yesterday, they're going to, you know, I think that, that probably kept them in. Probably. We'll see what happens. There's still lots of football to be played, but uh, things change weekly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the playoff, we may try to do a, a live stream. We haven't done one yet. Uh, come Tuesday when the actual rankings come out. So look for us there. Uh, and you'll go in much more detail. I won't be able to make that one, but you'll go in a lot more detail. On yeah. the, we'll talk about what's going on. The happen. actual playoff picture yeah. concerning the teams that... Uh, or in that initial grouping, 
and the ones outside, because there's going to be some movement in and out. It's going to be interesting to see where we're at on that. Um, uh, well, let's talk about uh, the new faking injuries thing with Sankey, Tim. Well, it's four years too late. Yeah. Uh, it should have been addressed four years ago. It's ridiculous that it was not. It's been ridiculous every single year since then. Right. And I have zero confidence in the reason Sankey says. Right. He says it's for the sanctity of the game. Well, yeah. three years, four years almost full, the sanctity of the game has been getting bent over. Right. And you've cashed checks. And one of his statements was, you know, when he's talking about the sanctity of the game and, and using these things is to simulate timeouts. Yeah. And to me, what you're really concerned about is he's concerned he's these four hours long games. Yeah. That's what's got his attention because everybody's running tempo now. It's happening in multiple games all across the conference. And now he's got to come up with something. Well, you know how the NCAA works, Tim, in the SEC office. I mean, they must be government related because they're always uh, way later than they should be. I mean, I, I wish I could have their jobs, you know what I mean? It's like, well, it's just... Now, you can follow up or better in a government position or a, or the NCAA I than you were on those. How, how does this take basically four years to, 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 to agree with a, a memo that was wrote up by somebody in 10 minutes, you know? Yes. I mean... Well, let's talk a little bit about the memo. Right. Um, he says that the first time you do it, there'll be a public reprimand. Of the head coach, plus a $50,000 fine. Second time will be a public river man and a $100,000 fine. And the third time will be a public river man and a one-game suspension for the following game yeah. for that head coach. Um, I question, well, I know Steve Shaw is going to be the one to determine it, the right. national head of officials. He's going to look, I reckon that, like in Tennessee's case, we'll have to put forth plays submit plays to be reviewed mm -hmm. that we felt was um, possible violations of it. Right. And he will review them. Um, I don't expect a lot to come out of it. I promise you, Stoops yesterday didn't expect anything to come out of it because it certainly didn't slow down Kentucky yesterday. Anytime we got momentum and uh, we shoot down the field, all of a sudden a sniper come out of the stand somewhere. <laughs> And a player back got the leg blew off or something. It was pathetic. And one guy was overacting so much that the people up in the stands were laughing at the guy. In my opinion, Tim, it's going to be it's going to take a coach pointing to somebody to do something, uh, or another player doing like that one old Miss player just hey, you know, jump yeah. down. Yeah, you going Yeah, I think it's going to take something like that. I mean, to me, I, I don't see, because how, how can they prove a person faked an injury? We all probably know if the if it's happened at the end of a drive, you know, he walks out and he's right back mm -hmm. in the very next play. It was probably faked. Well, it's, supposedly the standard, it just will be, does it appear likely? Right. That More it, than likely, it was faked. So, I mean, and another question is, okay, like last night. I'll guarantee you there was at least three instances that more than likely was a fake injury. Yeah. So would Mark Stoops get a fifty thousand dollar fine, a hundred thousand dollar fine, and a game suspension all in from the same game? No, nah, I don't see him. It, it's a much little about nothing on that. I think the the as we mean you stated before, you know, for this to change and actually do anything, you need to change the rule to something like. If there's a fake injury, and this probably needs to be NCAA, not SEC, but you're probably going to need to do something like if a player goes out, if, if the staff has to come out for you, then you have to miss six plays, eight plays, yeah. ten plays. The rest of the theory, something like that. Something also, like that. don't allow that team to come over to the sideline or the sideline come over to the team and have a free timeout. We discuss things and don't let any other substitutions. I expect them to make those kind of changes to him, and it'll probably be about four years from now before they, when they people that stop, data and able to... Yeah. Well, when people stop running tempo or something, right. then they'll come out with the rules change. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you. You're still an embarrassment. <laughs> right. You uh, took yeah. off. You took over for Slive, and you've not changed anything. You're yeah. just yeah, yeah. So well, anyway, we won yesterday. We won. So I'm gonna be yeah. happy. Yeah, we won. Next week's Mississippi State big thing Tuesday is the uh, college football playoff. Football playoff playoff coming up. So be looking for that, guys. Watch for us. And uh, how about a go balls, Tim? Absolutely, go balls. Beat them cats again. Let's go college football playoff. That's right.